opportunity. Hey, it's all yours. It's there. It's there for the taking. But you want to do it according to not what this man would say or any other man, but according to what God would say. K-A-I-R-O-S, the Greek uh, transliteration, pronounced kairos. It means opportunity. Now, I'm going to be using three or four words. Uh, remember, kairos, which is to say opportunity. You're going to, I'll be using this word once with pros in front of it, okay? You're familiar with pro. Pro means for. Pros is a stronger Greek word that means for, but looking forward. Pros kairos, okay? And then you're going to have uh, one kairos, opportunity, and before it, you're going to have eu. Eu, or pronounced in the Greek, eu, eu kairos. Uh, it means it's good. It's a good opportunity. You need to know when those good ones and those that are well come along, right? And then you're going to have one more. Don't let this confuse you now. I'll call it to your attention as we pass it and it's utilized. But I want you to know how many times opportunity is mentioned in the New Testament, but is translated something else, okay, to the English uh, speaking person. In other places, ak he rose. That means bad. That's inopportunity. That means you don't you don't want to waltz to that tune. It's probably played by Satan as he fiddles. Okay, that's. A in front of K-I-A-R-O-S, inopportunity. Now, that, don't, don't worry about that. Don't let it confuse you. Just remember the word opportunity, and I'll explain the value of it. I suppose I would say one more word about pros. What many people don't realize that opportunity is connected with time, okay, seasons, um, a great deal, whether it's temporary, long range, or what, and is translated so many times in the New Testament as time, season, or temporal, and the word is opportunity, kehiros. And uh, I think it leaves a little bit uh, lacking for the English mi speaking mind because when there's an opportunity there, you have to make a decision. Do nothing, and in other words, we, we have, you know, we could say, well, why do they have the pro and the U and the A? Well, we have a lot of sayings and figures of speech in English. Strike while the iron's hot, okay? I mean, when the opportunity is right, jump in there, okay? And uh, saddle him up, boys, I'll ride him. This is the time, all right? Well, you still got your nerve up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it isn't that much different than the English, and that's why I wanted to draw it out and let you know that opportunity is very seasonal, very timely, and is always connected with time. And I suppose some of us have a little difficulty wavering, holding back maybe, when an opportunity comes by, and once it's missed, you know, you got to wait till the next train comes along, it's gone. So hopefully we can sharpen our minds as to what God's Word has to say about opportunity. Open your Bibles with me to the, to the great book of Galatians. And Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it reads, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault... Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. In other words, it hap if it, just in case it happens to you next time. Now that's after someone repents and tries to do better. Don't, don't take care of a deadhead, okay? I mean, somebody that's got a want to be restored. That... Um, ask forgiveness from our Father and is ashamed and wishes to do better, all right? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's opportunity within itself. Verse 2, 
Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's the law of brotherly love. All right? But at the same time, I repeat, do not be taken advantage of. Okay? Well, what are you talking about? Well, Christ's law is that a brother won't try to tromp on you. Okay? A brother is somebody that tries to carry his own weight, but slips a little bit. Verse, um, it's called the law of love. It's what Christ's law is. Three, if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. That goes without saying, does it not? You can always tell a man by his fruit, all right? And um, by that I mean what he does, how successful he is. Is he a servant of God? And so forth. But by the servant, do you mean he's a preacher? No, I, that means anyone that follows in the order of the love of Christ, okay? Four, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. In other words, don't compare yourself to another as to your adequacies especially in serving the Lord. God gives p different people different gifts. That person can't blow their horn because God gave them maybe a strong gift, okay? Because that gift belongs to God. So don't compare yourself. Just do what you feel led of God or what God tells you to do and do it to the best of your ability. Don't compare yourself with other people all the time because you're not other people, you're yourself. Verse 5, for every man shall bear his own burden. In other words, every man's going to carry his own load. That's the way it's supposed to be. God's elect always do this thing. Um, nobody's perfect. Sometimes we fall. But that doesn't mean you're down for the count. Get up. Act like a child of God. Verse 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. That, that simply means share in the word, get into it, all right? Uh, study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word. Seven, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Boy, don't ever think you can. He knows what you're thinking. If you start trying to corner him, he, he knows in advance what you got on your mind. You haven't got a prayer of a chance when it comes to mocking our Father. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God promises that. So, uh, shortchanging a brother, you're not going to get away with it, all right? Ripping a brother off, you're not going to get away with it. God's going to cause you to reap what you sow. So, uh, what is it that a Christian is supposed to sow? Do you know? The Word, of course, the Word of God. And then you will reap the Word of God, His message of love and understanding. Okay, you always reap what you sow. Verse uh, 8, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. In other words, you can concentrate on what your flesh body wants, you know. And if, if you sow to that, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really work hard here. I need a new motorboat so I can go fishing this weekend. I'll, I'll probably die if I don't. You know? And, you know, or, or I really need a sharp vehicle, something I don't look too impressive without a little help, so man, that'll make me look, I'm looking good, cruising the town, really, I mean, right up there. That's for flesh. You need to, this is where pros really comes into play. You need to look down the road a little bit, or pro, be for, for forward, okay? You need to look forward. And understand, these things are not going to be around very long. And you're going to be naked as a jaybird in heaven because you won't have any righteous works. Therefore, 
think about it and plan ahead and let the inner man, that's the man that dwells inside this flesh man, rule this man. Don't let flesh take over because God has made promises. He's promised you that with eternal life, you're going to have the best. And that's, that's not just for a hundred years. That's forever. I mean, we're talking really pro here. We're looking forward and we're talking a lifetime. I don't know. Where do you put your um, thoughts? Do you just think about flesh? Or do you think about the eternity and what you can do there? Okay. Uh, nine. And let us not be weary in well-doing. I mean, that, that can happen to you. Okay. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I just can't wait. I, I get weary. I want it now. God, don't you understand? Give me patience now. Okay. Well, don't be like that. Don't be like that at all. Some people, oh well. I want to go one more verse and then I want to back up a little bit. Verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, kehiros, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of the faith. Of the faith. That, well, faith in what? Faith in Christ, that he is the Son of God, that he, the promises he's made are, that he made are true, and that his ministry changes lives, takes families off drugs, brings them into a productive, active family that is producing good fruit for our Heavenly Father. Now, do you know something? The reason I passed verse 9, because I kind of laid the, sea work, the footwork that opportunity is used in the New Testament, but it's not translated as opportunity. Do you know what that word season in verse 9 is? It's the same word as the word opportunity translated in verse 10. It's opportunity. Now let's read it so, but there is a t time, as I told you, connected with it. But it is just plain old out and out, the same Greek word, kehilos. Okay, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due opportunity... It's there. I don't know. Are you going to take it? Opportunity we shall reap if we faint not, if you don't give up. The opportunity is yours to choose. And it is a timely thing. Not your time. Guess whose time it runs on? Our Father's, of course. His time schedule. And hey, if you really love Him, that's okay with you. Do you know why? He's a lot smarter than you are. He knows what you have need of, and he's very timely and pros, forward-looking. So he knows when you need it. So don't forget it. All right? So here we have a case where you have a great deal more opportunity simply because the word was translated season when you forget that the very prime root of the word translated season is opportunity. So... Always grasp that opportunity when it comes by. If I could just be sure. Well then, you know what? When you, when you keep saying, if I could just be sure, if I could just claim this promise, do you know what you're doing? You're being a doubter. You're showing lack of faith. And you know what follows lack of faith? Doubt of whether you're truly a Christian or not. So what I'm saying is we're shaving some pretty fine shavings here, friend. It kind of separates the would-bees from the bees. Because, well, nothing ever goes right for me. Well, then sow good seed. And you'll reap good seed. There's something wrong if you're not sowing good seed. Don't look somewhere else to blame. Look here in your own heart. And grasp the opportunity to sow good seed forever. You know, I kind of hope that we're all together forever. I really do. Do we want to cull anybody out? Well, 
I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we got a bunch of keepers, okay? Aren't you glad God controls that anyway and we don't have a choice in it? We really don't. It's all his doings. It's your work. What was that word back in verse uh, 4? But let every man prove his own work. Well, God can do that, all right? And he's real good at it. So there you have the common word, kehiros, without a pro, without a U, or without an A connected with it. Once translated as opportunity, and the verse before translated as season. Your opportunity in season. Season and times mean a great deal to our Father. And you need to be aware and you need to pay close attention. There are many opportunities. Let one go by and what did you get what you deserved? Of course you did. You got exactly what you deserved because you were sowing uh, when you thought maybe you should be reaping or something. Think about it, all right? Okay, let's go with to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. God has given us so many opportunities. I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to pick it up with verse 13. Paul teaching. Verse 13 of chapter 4, 2 Corinthians, and it reads, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Where, where is that written? That, that should always be important to you. You've got an opportunity there to find out. Your opportunity rests in Psalms 116, verse 10. And it says um, in that, it says, and I'm going to go from memory so it won't be an exact quote, but it'll be very close. I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, but all men are liars. That's in Psalms uh, 116, 10, and 11. And it continues on. Why? Well, compared to God's truth, you need to stick to it, all right? Then you're in true faith. You're in season. You're ripe for opportunity. You're ripe for an opportunity that is EU, which is to say good, good for you. Verse uh, 15. I'm sorry, 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you, with you all. Add a little southern sling to that. With you all. We all going to be together there, all right? This also means, as sure, how did Christ resurrect? Instantly. Well, guess what? You do too. Not, not, the, not, not a transfiguration. Now, stay with me, all right? I'm speaking time, opportunity here. Naturally, you're not going to lie in some hole in the ground out here. You instantly, as if we were to go to, well, isn't it strange? The fifth chapter is right after this chapter, isn't it? Drop down to verse um, uh, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. In other words, when you're absent from this body, guess where you are? You're present with the Lord. You're not out here in some hole in the ground. That's the most comforting message you can give to an unlearned person in God's Word by backing it up with other witnesses from the Scripture that their loved one is with the Father. For what reason? To be judged, of course. You don't have to go into detail. That drunken old rascal will probably go into hell, but he is with the Lord, you know, if that comforts you any, maybe, or something of that nature, all right? But use discretion and take advantage of the opportunity, all right? Uh, continuing with uh, verse 15. For all things are for your sakes. You want to read that again? For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. 
Hey, it's all worthwhile. The suffering that Paul went through, the suffering that Christ did, died on the cross, brought that to you, instant resurrection. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not. We're not impatient. We're not going to get weary. We're not going to give out. But through our outward, though our outward man perish, though that thing crinkles, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, think about that. Don't read over it. Day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, if you're careful. You can renew the spiritual man all the time in the scripture, feeding it the food that makes it grow vivacious and healthy. You know, you got some mighty sick spirits around. A sick spirit means a sick soul. And he who deals in soul murder is in greater trouble than someone that would even murder a flesh person. You'll have to take that up with the Father. I'm talking about people that mislead people. But again, in, in, in um, considering, every person sows his own seed regardless of who may advise him or whom he or she may listen to. It all rests on your shoulders. Day by day, you can renew it. You can, you can be more vivacious. Even when the flesh gets old and wrinkled, inside you can be a shining warrior for Almighty God. Verse 17, for our light affliction, that little trouble we went through, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In other words, it's worth it, all right? Verse 18, sharpen up for me. This is why we came here. While we look not at the things which are seen, that's flesh, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Guess what this word temporal means? What it is in the Greek. It's pros. Kairos, all right? It's opportunity. The opportunity is temporal, but it's a good one. And it pays you to look forward to it. Why? It's eternal. It's not just so you got a, uh, a bigger apple this month than you had last month to consume in the flesh. It's that you have pearls forever and no, I don't consider pearls to be worth a whole lot, but if they're pearls of truth, they are, okay? They're forever. I mean, you're looking pros forward, way down the road. But you get it now, daily, day by day. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. I wish that all of you could um, read the private mail I get, and you can't because it is private, okay? I mean, I have to respect people's, um, wishes, okay? Naturally, all of us like certain parts of our lives to be private. But if you knew how many people the word affects, that it changes lives. It, makes, it takes people and makes something really great out of them inside where they have the will and the want to grab Every opportunity that comes by to pros forward themselves and day by day grow stronger and stronger. Your physical condition has nothing to do with that. You can sit around with your physical condition and, and it can get the best of you. That's why a person that is handicapped is a far greater witnesser than I. Because regardless of the fact, they make the point that by day and by night they are strengthened and made new in Almighty God's Word. Temporal opportunity. 
Doesn't seem like it the way it's worded a whole lot, does it? But it is bedded right in the center of pros uh, 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 opportunity. Always take advantage of opportunity. You know, unfortunately, if you're one of these that the cup is always halfway empty instead of halfway full, you can miss a lot of opportunities that are there for you. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter whether the cup is half full or half empty. If you're serving God, he's going to see that it never goes empty anyway for a long period of time. He's going to take care of you. He's going to save you. He's going to use you day by day, hour by hour. You can, you can have faith in the sense of surety. That's a guarantee that he takes care of his own when they take care of him, his word, and the brethren. Okay, so there we have um, opportunity used in a little different light, and we see pros coming on the scene. Pros, again, is a, is a stronger form of pro, for. It's even stronger than that. So that you, as a reader of the manuscripts, no, he's really serious about this. It's not just pro or for, it's pros, meaning for and way down the road, forward, in time, and in that time sequence. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> Great book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Verse 12, what is the Word of God? Why is the Word of God, I just witnessed that it, I know personally how many, not how many, but I've got a pretty good report of those that study with us of how many lives are changed. And, and I truly mean changed to the better. What, what, what is the Word then? Listen to it. Chapter four of Hebrews, this is one of my favorite chapters out of the whole Bible. In the first verses, it declares that Christ becomes, became our Sabbath. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God, what's, what are we talking about? The word of God is quick. This word in the Greek means it's living. It's the living word. It's not dead. It's living and powerful. Dunamis, like dynamite. Uh, and sharper than a two-edged sword. It is even described as a two-edged sword in Revelation chapter 1, verses 15 or 16, which is it as the word of Christ. His tongue is a two-edged sword, meaning his word cuts both ways. Uh, piercing even to the dividing, the dividing of what? Dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That means from a man's self, to his thought process. You know, the word can go between or divide a man from his thought process and from his self, soul being self. God can change minds. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may have a loved one that you've worked with, been patient with and everything else. You can do nothing to change their mind. Try God. Try the word. And of the joints and moral, meaning the flesh body even, the word can handle. The word can divide. You know, uh, that's getting down pretty slim too. And is a discerner, or looks into, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, meaning your spirit. The Word can do that. It's alive. It's not just a book. Christ is that living Word. Verse 13. <laughs> Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Not one. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. In other words, um, he knows your thoughts. 
and he is our father. He has, you know, what, what, you, what makes it really easy is to know that he's not looking to zap you. God doesn't want to zap anybody. He wants to help people. Does that mean he will not have to someday? No, he's simply going to let them walk into the lake, take a little swim, okay, at, uh, at the very end, all right? I'm talking about in the lake of fire, all right? But today, while as it is written in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, God is long-suffering and it is his will that all come to repentance. They won't, but he would like for them to. Do you know why? They're his children. And he loves them. Do you love your children? Well, then, so does he. And he wants to bring them all. But they won't make it, all right, unfortunately. Why? Well, you know people, don't you? You should. How long have you been around this old world? You don't have to stick around long until you learn people, okay? 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession or our belief, our thoughts. Don't let anything jar you away from the truth, in other words, which is the word that is living and sharp. 15, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Christ knows, but was in all points or things tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Do you know something? He made it, we don't. We kind of fall short. But that's why he paid the price, is so he can say, hey, I forgive you, go and sin no more. And he does it with love and with understanding. He said, I don't even remember it. Don't ever bring it up to me again. It's forgiven. So that's the way he is. And, and he does that. He was tempted just like you, only he made it without sin. Got it? 16. This is why we came here. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, if I were to if I were to give you a guess, what would you say that word time is in the Greek? Put it EU in front of it. You Kehiros. What did I say new meant? It's good. A good and a new opportunity. All right? Now let's read it the way the manuscripts have it. And find grace to help in the very good opportunity of need that he wants to help you in that. That lets you know his feelings and amplifies it. So I wish he would just help me. He wants to. Let him. Well, what do I do? Do the word. And he will help you. Your work speaks for itself, friend. Do I know your work? Nope. It don't matter whether I know it or not. He knows it. And he's the one that hands out blessings, not man. Thank God. He passes out blessings. He knows what's in your heart. He knows whether you're genuine or not. Verse 24 of chapter 11, the book of Hebrews. Let's go with it. By faith, Moses when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Man, look what he threw away. Whew. I mean, he had it made. He, you know, he was, old Ramesses was even thinking about letting Moses replace him. He loved Moses. Think about it. 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. Wonder what that word season would be in the Greek. Well, let me think. Uh, well, it's pros, uh, 
que heroes, okay? I mean, he was really looking forward. He didn't care about what Pharaoh, because he knew Pharaoh was probably going to be dead in a few years anyway, and this was all going, but God was forever. Do you understand the emphasis on that? The opportunity. He took the opportunity. That's what the word seasons is, okay? For a season. Time is always connected with opportunity. Seize the time, okay? Watch yourself. You've heard the old saying, and there's really not that much connection, but it pops into my mind, time is money, okay? It is if you've got God's blessings and you utilize your time properly, so it is opportunity. He chose the oppor- he had the opportunity and chose it to follow God rather than a manly government. What do you do today? Verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He knew what the reward would be. Do you ever think of the reward? There's no sin in thinking of the reward. Eternity with Him and peace and contentment. No illness. That's the reward. And, you know, for Him to place His hand upon your forehead and say, My good and faithful servant, well done. You've done a good job. You took the opportunity in the right season to serve me over the way of the world. Verse 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He knew the love of God was what was important, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now that'll kind of test your faith a little bit to go on what's seen. He could see Pharaoh sitting over there. Man, I mean chariots, horses, gold, the whole bit. But he believed in the God that spoke to him or would speak to him soon after this relatively from the mountain. He believed in the unseen, the spiritual father and his spiritual self. Verse 28. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Just think about it. The choice he made was right. All the firstborn of Egypt died. The children did not that were under the blood. Are you under the blood today? The blood of Christ. If we were to go back to the 10th chapter, you would find where he would say, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to shed blood for one in all times. Make sure you're under that. 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, assaying to do, were drowned. They didn't make it. So there you have Moses choosing an opportunity, and it's pros. Pros is even a stronger form, as I, and I'm repeating this, but I don't want you to forget it, than pro, for. Because it has time, the time element connected to it that means forward. He was looking forward, not at the present. You've got to look forward, my friend. And listen, don't ever get sold by Satan a bill of goods well, what I want to give you is for right now. You, know, you can have it all now. Okay. You know, he'll, he'll sell you that bill of goods. But what did the scripture say we read today? That the word is sharp. It divides. Day by day, you can be blessed and strengthened now. Those old Egyptian boys in those iron chariots in the middle of the Red Sea when the water closed in, how fast can you swim with armor on, okay? Carrying my steeds, okay? Not very fast, all right? So follow, God sees to it. Do you, do you think Moses is the one that caused the waters to close and drown? The, no, God did. He's the same yesterday he is today and he will be forever. Your life is important to him. It's important to him what you do, 
what you think and how you love him. It's important to him. And he has that reward. Think about it. It's yours. You're his child. That's family. Think about it. Okay. Well, I got to so thinking about it, I forgot where we are. Okay. I'm sure I have one more place I wish to take you, and it's, it's where we're going to see the uh, bad. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. In closing, that's not just one verse. When I say in closing like that, it means I got about 10 minutes to go, okay, or something like that. 2 Timothy and let's go with chapter 4 and it. We're just going to cover about 8 verses and I think we've nailed this down about opportunity. Why, why am I giving a lecture on the word opportunity when it's Really, it's translated time and season and temporal because within that you have a strong opportunity and opportunity means you, not somebody else. You must make the decision. And I'm hoping that this will help you to take advantage of opportunities in making the decision in the future. It'll give you a, found, a stronger foundation to know that God is with you. Hey, grab that ring, go with it, all right? Once you've thought it through, do it wisely. Don't be the fool that tried to sell dog food that dogs won't eat, okay? You know, you, that should have, what should that have been? That should have been the first thing he, he researched, right? Of course it is, but it was last with him. You gotta give it a pretty package. He was trying to fool people but you can't fool dogs, okay? All right, well, anyway, uh, lest I digress. Chapter 4, 2 Timothy, verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's the living, and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. That means those that still have mortal souls, though they are resurrected, they're called dead, Okay? Uh, why? Because they may not make it. The judgment only will tell. Two, preach the word. That's important, beloved. How? Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Well, what do you think is in that verse in the Greek? You had seasons mentioned two times. Well, what is it in the manuscripts? Well, the first is E-U. You. What did we say E-U meant? It's good. It's, it's a good opportunity. I mean, preach that word in a good opportunity, but out of season is a different word. Different in sense, it's still got the word opportunity there. You got to put a K or an A before the word kahina, no, no, that's okay, which means inopportune. The A makes it an inopportune time. Well, do we just pick up our marbles and go home? Well, let's read it again. Preach the word, be instant in a good situation, a good opportunity. Out of season, that means at an inopportune time, reprove. Don't you change the preaching, okay? Reprove, rebuke, exhort, all long-suffering and doctrine. Now, to me, when I think of my mind chases the scriptures, and I see something out of season. I think it's well that Akniros was translated here, season. Though it may lose a little bit as far as the tenses are concerned or the severity of it. 
But there's a lot of people going to be harvested out of season because of an inopportune appearance of the spurious Messiah. They're going to miss it. That's very serious, my friend. You have the opportunity to follow him, to please him, and to love him. And he gives you, you know something? Do you know that he trusts you enough to make your own mind up? He does. And if you take advantage of the opportunity and return his love, he wants you. If you take an inopportune season and choose to love someone else or just love him, you made your own mind up. He considers you not real and you're out. Okay? But it's got to originate within you. He left you that choice. It's your decision, not somebody else's. There is no pastor that will be standing between you and Almighty God. Just you. And you make the opportunity available to choose Him and to love Him and follow Him. Take that. What, what better thing could you want than the word that is sharper than a two-edged sword that can cut between a man's mind and his self? That changes people. Do you understand? When you change someone's thoughts, his spirit, you're changing his mind. He may think that he may think he dislikes his wife. But the wife can pray. When nothing else will work. No, nobody can do anything with that ornery cuss. Sometimes when it comes right down to it, if you put the double whammy to it, well, I don't want to use that terminology. You really put the prayer to it and use that word. It, God can change minds when you can't. Nobody can. It can cause one to want to do right, do what's right. Because basically we are all creatures of love. We want to be loved. We want to be fair, but we want to be treated fair. Well, that's what God wants. Okay? So you've got no problem in this world. He gives you the benefit, uh, the opportunity to make that decision for yourself, okay? So preach it, preach it in season and out of season. What does that mean? Don't change the word to fit an occasion. You know, I have taught for years and years and years. And there is one thing, many times I will update because God gives you more knowledge, but you've never heard me change God's word. I'll stick by it, okay? Now, does that make me something special? No. But it makes his doctrine fantastic. That it's always true. And it's always in season. Verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Isn't that something? Do you think the word opportunity is in that verse? It is. Let's put it in there where it should be. For the time, for the, and the word here is just plain old pure, kehiros. No pro, no a, no you. Okay, just plain old opportunity. Let's read it so. For the opportunity will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. So it's your opportunity to do what? Well, that's up to you, okay? That's entirely up to you. It's not my business to make your mind up for you. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That means just to tickle the ears, to make people feel good, to make promises to people whether it align with God's word or not. Like, you don't have to study God's word, you're a bright person. Why would you want to go to all the trouble of studying 22 chapters of the unveiling when you're going to be gone? You're not even going to be here. You know? Well, 
who is smarter, God or that man? Okay, I hope you think your father is because he is your father and he don't make no mistakes. So, yep, there you got it, okay? You have that word again. Verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. People love little children. Tell me a story. Well, make sure they understand it's not, if it's not a Bible story, it's not. Because people like, I think they prefer fables. I think they prefer many times to have their ears tickled rather than to exercise the mind. Oh, it hurts. Well, I have to use it. Okay. Rather than use the mind, they would rather listen to a bunch of malarkey, false promises without ever checking it out. Verse 5, But watch thou in all things, enduring afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Well, how do I do that? In the Word, of course. If it's not in the Word, I wouldn't give you two cents for it. It's a waste of time. Deceiving people. Misleading people. But you've never read that book. I've read this one. Many, many times. I've taught this one. Many, many times. I find it sufficient. Okay. Well, does that mean you don't like to read books? I got lots of books. Okay. But they don't compare to this, and I never let them interfere with this. Proof of thy ministry. How do you prove it? By the Word of God. If it doesn't align with the Word of God, you better get rid of it. Or you're in danger, friend. Spreading false doctrine. That's Satan's work. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Wonder if the word opportunity is in that verse. Well, it sure is. Paul calls it an opportunity. Okay, and um, and uh, he's he's kind of anxious for it. The word time, of course, as it's used here, is kahiros. It's his opportunity. For I am now ready to be offered. And the opportunity of my departure is at hand. He calls it an opportunity. And it is. What, what does opportunity mean? It means you have a choice. God trusts you to make that choice. And I hope you understand what I'm doing with trying to teach that you can absorb. God loves you. He gives you all kinds of opportunities, sometimes that are simply passed off as times, seasons, and so forth. It's your opportunity, my friend. Verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, that's what we're going for, to be judged, shall give me all that day. And not to me only, this is important to you, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do you? Will you love his appearing? Are you going to be ready for it? A lot going to happen between now and then. Some are going to be guilty of some pretty bad things. Some of them even because they took an inopportune time to do maybe something not good. And I'm speaking strictly religion here. We all have our little personal sins that it seems like we, you know, I don't know why it is, but every time you wade through the cow pen, if you're not careful, you know, you're going to step in something you shouldn't. It just happens, all right? That's life. And it, well, well, that's the crudest thing I have ever heard. Well, I'm a country person, all right, and I'm a communicator. That gets it said. Life has a lot of temptations. Christ lived under the same temptations you do, and he came through it perfect. So at least make a good stab at it, okay? And be careful where you step, all right? That's good advice. <laughs> okay. I love our Father's Word, and I love to study it. I love to rightly divide it to the best of our ability to 
absorb from it his emotions toward us, toward you. How that he has a much more personal walk with you. You see, Paul, uh, you know, he has the same faith you have. He gets that gift, all right. That's why he couldn't leave you out. Day by day, you can now work toward that. It's your opportunity. Opportunity is a wonderful thing. When our Father opened those doors to opportunity for us, I love it they called this state the land of opportunity. Well, it, indeed it is. And we had, we, I mean, it's the land of opportunity where we have excellent streams and rivers. Some of our politicians, well, they're, you know, they, it seems like when they get away from home especially, I don't know. But anyway, it is a great state, but he has given you the opportunity to make your own mind up. Nobody else can do that for you. You get to make your own mind up whether or not you take advantage of all the opportune times that are going to approach you between now and his return or your demise. It's your baby, all right? Isn't that wonderful that he trusts us that much? That he gives us the instructions and if you read them well, you don't mess up too bad. I would advise leaving self out of the word a great deal. I, I told them I was, you know, my Irish kind of plays games sometimes. And I, The other day I went through one office and I said, every once in a while God brings along a very special person that can cut it, that can do anything. And nobody said anything. The next time I came through, I said, as I said the other day, I like to try people out, you know, like Henry Ford putting the log in the main entrance. I mean, a huge thing. And it laid there and people walked around it. Not one person asked, what's the log in the office for? <laughs> you know, what's that log doing in there? <laughs> okay. He fired the whole bunch. Now, my crew's not like that. I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I just like to tease a lot, I guess, okay? And I came back through and I said, every once in a while, God brings forth a very special person that can do all things. And then I told them, I said, and if she calls in today, I want her number, okay? <laughs> so, for what it's worth, opportunity. Take advantage of the good opportunities and improve your life day by day and your Father will love you for it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for your many blessings. We ask always, Father, that you open the manuscripts to us whereby we can understand the words that you spoke. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>